I told you guys in my last video that I wanted to take a break from having to listen to insane idiots and check out something new. So I took a look at the recommendations you left to try and pick out a topic that was a little bit less political. Imagine how I felt when I saw the idea of covering Elon Musk. The brain that is above all big brains. The free speech absolutist. The man who invented electric cars, self-landing rockets, PayPal, Hyperloop, little tiny submarines that can rescue children from caves, and self-driving vehicles. Look at me, getting ahead of myself. There's a lot to do, so I'm going to head off and start my research, and I'll see you guys in a few days. Oh, well that's great, we've got another fucking idiot. He's not into the whole free speech thing. He didn't create Tesla, he didn't design the self-landing rockets, he didn't do any of it. But how? How is none of this common knowledge? How is it that I, just some geezer, has done more to understand this narcissistic man-child than his own fans? And why does he look like somebody's microwaved Kevin Durand? Okay, look, let's start from the beginning. I'll share with you guys what I've learned, but it might be a good time to grab a cup of tea, because we're going to get balls deep into Elon's Musk. Elon was born to a fairly well-off family. His mother was a model and dietitian, and his father was an engineer with a side hustle owning 50% of an emerald mine in Zambia. Now, I know what Elon's defenders would say right now. His dad didn't own an emerald mine. This is just hearsay. Elon has repeatedly questioned the source of this rumor. Well, dear friend, if I could ask you to yank Elon's ludicrously veiny cock out of your mouth and look at the screen for a second, I will show you the truth. See, the rumors actually came from himself in an interview with Jim Clash for Forbes magazine. He was quoted as saying, this is going to sound slightly crazy, but my father also had a share in an emerald mine in Zambia. I was 15 and really wanted to go with him, but didn't realize how dangerous it was. I couldn't find my passport, so I ended up grabbing my brother's, which turned out to be six months overdue. So we had this plane load of contraband and an overdue passport from another person. There were AK-47s all over the place and I'm thinking, man, this could really go bad. Wow, well, that's quite the story. I'd link you to it, but they removed it from their website very shortly after publishing it. When Snopes reached out for comment, nobody at Forbes responded. Also, just to seal the deal, his father posted this to his Facebook page to clarify his position on apartheid, in which he admits he owned a 50% stake in an emerald mine which collapsed in 1989 because Russians started to undercut them with lab-made perfect emeralds. And look, I'm not here to paint a picture that his father is a terrible person or anything. You can read his justification and decide that for yourselves. The link to the post is in the description. I'm just here to simply point out that his fans always say that he built himself up from nothing, but that just is not the case. He isn't a self-made billionaire in the same way that Crystal with a K isn't a self-made disappointing stripper. You have to give at least some of that credit to their dads. Well, maybe it helped him not being poor, but he still built his own businesses, right? Well, it's certainly true that he co-founded a number of companies, but this wouldn't have started without a $28,000 investment from his father. Adjusted for inflation, that 28 grand looks a lot more like 55 grand. He created Zip2 with it, and in 1999 sold it for $307 million, with a cut of $22 million for himself. From there, Elon forged forward in the business world. He co-founded X.com, merged with Confinity, and got ousted by the board for being about as useful as Anne Frank's drum kit. He was then replaced as CEO by Peter Thiel, who rebranded the company as PayPal. This, by the way, is what he's referring to when he says he was a co-founder of PayPal. Just to be clear about the complete fuckery happening here, this is no different to the bloke that sold paint to Leonardo da Vinci, calling himself the co-founder of the Mona Lisa. 
Nevertheless, by the time PayPal was acquired by eBay, Elon was still the largest stakeholder, and took home a tasty $175 million. This story of Elon being a CEO that couldn't find his ass with both hands and a radar won't be entirely unfamiliar to you by the end of this video. Elon went on to found SpaceX, and gave himself the titles of both CEO and Chief Engineer. I mean, sure, he's not a rocket scientist in the conventional sense, but I'm sure he will have a lot to contribute besides having a cool leather jacket collection and a fucking massive forehead. Here's a clip of YouTube creator Everyday Astronaut making a huge improvement to Elon's thruster design by humbly asking a question. But this is only for the booster, right? Yes. Um, although arguably, now you mention it, we, should, we, should, we, might, we might, might be wise to do this for the ship too. And here's a follow-up video of Musk with the same guy being a totally narcissistic asshole by saying it occurred to him while they were talking that he should make the changes that the interviewer clearly prompted him to conclude. I'd say that's like one of the biggest improvements that we've made. I gotta admit that was when you were talking about the last time, and I, I kept thinking about yeah, literally, it. Literally, I was actually used. I was just. It was like literally occurred to me in real time. Uh, yeah. It occurred to me while I was explaining it to you. <laughs> I was like, wait, what are we doing? Elon passing somebody else's ideas off as his own is pretty much his trademark at this point. Elon claims that he spends approximately 80 to 90 percent of his time at SpaceX leading the design team. His notable contributions so far are. Um, making Starship pointy, because Borat said it was cool. Another one was a scene where he's, uh, <laughs> they, they show him the new missile they've developed, and, uh, but it has kind of a round, round head, and he says, uh, you need to make it more pointy to, to, <laughs> to his engineers. <laughs> and, uh, actually, that's why I also said the same thing. Um, you know, Starship, we need to make it more pointy. Did you say that? Mm -hmm. Because of the movie? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> you literally told them to make the Starship more pointy because of the movie The Dictator. Yep. <laughs> wow, he's so random. What a genius. Contrary to popular belief, he didn't create self-landing or VTVL rockets. They were being successfully tested by Maston Space Systems Armadillo Aerospace, and others before SpaceX. Elon continues to be a total smeg at SpaceX to this day, ignoring calls to enforce the company's zero-tolerance policies regarding the sexist culture many women have complained about. When a group of employees penned an open letter complaining about Elon's actions online and describing him as a source of both distraction and embarrassment, the company saw fit to fire nine of them. The company said that their work was too important to deal with this activism. Just to be clear, when they say their work, they mean that they're trying to build metal boxes that they can shoot to Mars because Elon Musk thinks it would be cool. You're doing the Lord's work there, guys. I'm sure your HR department are far too busy trying to get us to Mars to worry about those pesky sexual assault claims. But Giza, what about Tesla? He made Tesla Motors. Well, that's the thing. This misconception is just another whole pile of cock that's been fed to you by this absolute pigeon fucker. Too much? Eh, fuck it. Tesla was created by Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpenning. Then they got Musk on board with all $6.5 million he proposed to bring to the table in investments. There were a few disagreements, words were exchanged, feelings were hurt, and once Eberhard was removed from the company, a legal battle began. Eberhard filed a defamation, slander, and libel lawsuit against Musk for being a narcissistic man-baby with the brain power and personality of a cold lump of catsick. Not the exact wording on the document, but you get it. In the end, they settled out of court, with one of the allowances being that Musk could also call himself a co-founder. He has maintained the role of CEO ever since. You'll also see the same kind of problems around Tesla's toxic work culture as you do around SpaceX. One of the most concerning stories, however, is to do with Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada. 
This was first reported by USA Today's The City podcast, in which journalist Anjanette Damon tells the story of OSHA attempting to access their facility after a number of women were injured. Despite having a warrant to inspect the premises and having a deputy to enforce the warrant, they were told to step down by the Attorney General after they were refused access by Tesla employees. Despite the fact that the Attorney General clearly doesn't have a spine, he somehow still managed to drag his useless carcass to a meeting with Tesla to negotiate a health inspection. You know, like, you can check the foyer, but you're not allowed in the room where we keep the bucket of King Cobras. The whole thing is pretty sus, as Elon would say. In 2018 alone, the Gigafactory generated, on average, more than a call a day to 911. I suppose the state is more interested in the amount of jobs the factory can create, because it's good for their reports. If you get injured or killed, that's a you problem. But what does Elon say about all of this? He's quoted as saying, This is not some situation where, for example, we are just greedy capitalists who decide to scrimp on safety in order to have more profits and dividends and that kind of thing. It's just a question of how much money we lose, and how do we survive? How do we not die and have everybody lose their jobs? Oh well fuckity do, excuse me for thinking that the richest man in the world, the billionaire genius that single-handedly revolutionised how we fucking crash cars, can figure out a way to have less amputations in his futuristic super factory full of genius fucking robot people. Maybe you could use some of the 1.3 billion fucking dollars granted to you by Nevada to entice you into moving there, you absolute fucking cunt. This is just one example of this company's total lack of care shown towards its employees. With just a single Google search, you can find dozens of instances in which current and former employees talk about friends and colleagues falling unconscious during work and having to work around their bloodied bodies. Or how the flagrant racism displayed by even the company's HR representatives has resulted in a lawsuit for Tesla. Or how Tesla refused to allow OSHA access to their accident records. Not that it matters since they failed to even keep account of acute amputations, never mind near misses. During the days before he spunked $44 billion on Tesla, he spent a massive portion of his time arguing there as well. He notably got into a Twitter war with Senator Elizabeth Warren, somebody I wouldn't usually go far out of my way to defend, on the issue of taxes. She implied he was a tax dodging little weasel, and he rebutted by saying that he will pay more taxes this year than any American that has ever lived. While that sounds impressive, it's not exactly an injustice. He was, at the time, the richest man in the world, and should pay taxes that are proportionate to his wealth. You get no brownie points from me for actually paying the taxes that you're supposed to pay. But since we're on the subject of taxes, maybe it's worth noting that Tesla didn't pay a penny in federal taxes in 2021, despite it recording its most profitable year on record and netting $5.5 billion. How did they do that? Well, there's a really cool thing that you can do called tax avoidance. Let's take 2021 as an example. Despite a net income of $5.5 billion, Tesla recorded a loss of $130 million from its US operations. That means that they pay no federal taxes because they reported a loss. Tesla has structured their business in a way that allows them to report that the $6 billion in pre-tax profits that they actually made as a business came from overseas. This is despite the fact that 45% of its revenue came from US sales. Martin Sullivan, an expert on US corporate tax practices, says that this multinational business structure is so common it's almost malpractice not to do it. Just to rub some salt in the wound, Tesla has also accepted over $2 billion in rewards from the US government in the form of loans, grants and contracts. But that's Tesla, not Elon. He doesn't even take a salary. Isn't that good? Well, not really. This is where we should understand the difference between income and wealth. 
See, Musk is worth billions, mostly because he owns large portions of companies that are all worth a lot of money. You'd think that in order for him to afford his weekly shop, he would have to sell off a bunch of his assets, right? No, because that would be subject to taxes, and Elon does not like taxes. Instead, the ultra-wealthy tend to live off credit. See, by pledging some of their assets as collateral, banks may be much happier to give them a virtually unlimited amount of credit at, say, 3% interest as opposed to the 20% taken through capital gains tax when you sell off assets. Elon isn't refusing a salary because he's a noble man that wants to put the business first. I would instead posit that it's because Elon is a greedy little niffler who looks like he was created by gluing together John Barrowman's offcuts. I doubt it will be a surprise to you at this point that Musk bought Twitter in 2022 after acquiring the company for $44 billion. It was a deal that went totally smoothly. The price per share was agreed, and the board unanimously accepted Musk's offer to buy them out. Then, apparently, the ketamine wore off, and Elon realised he would actually have to run the festering shithole that is Twitter. He tried to back out of the deal, citing the amount of bots present as a reason why, but once the board began legal proceedings to force him to honour the deal, he had no choice but to follow through. Elon claimed that layoffs would certainly happen, but as of now, Twitter has around 2,000 employees, down from the 7,500 when he took over the company. After climbing back atop his high horse, he proclaimed to the world that he would allow Twitter to be the free speech haven he always wanted it to be. See, free speech is a fundamental right, and Twitter is the digital town square after all. This included the account that was tracking the movements of his private jet. He even tweeted himself that he wouldn't ban the account because it was publicly available information and it was just a citizen exercising their right to free speech. That's until the account's owner refused his $5,000 offer to shut up and delete the account, and he was banned by Musk as soon as he took over Twitter. Turns out that free speech is great, just so long as you don't say anything that Lord Elon doesn't want you to say. He also made free speech monetized thanks to Twitter Blue. See, you can now subscribe to Twitter for $8 a month, and it allows you to have your tweets and replies feature above others who aren't subscribed. Don't get me wrong, you're still allowed in the virtual town square, but you aren't allowed near the stage. Also, everybody else has microphones. And thanks to a new feature added last month, you can only enable two-factor authentication if you pay. Such a brilliant business move. But maybe all of this shouldn't be a reflection of his character, right? Maybe we can separate the businessman from the human. I was actually seriously writing a justification for this until I read an exchange on Twitter today that just utterly blew my fucking mind. It all started with a man named Halley when he tweeted at Elon to let him know as a Twitter employee that his computer access was cut and HR were no longer able to confirm if he worked there anymore. Elon replies by asking him what he does at the company, and after allowing him to break confidentiality clauses by having this discussion on fucking Twitter, Halley begins to list his current and previous projects. Elon then uses this opportunity to torture somebody in his employment, because he's a genius billionaire that will save humanity, and not just another morally bankrupt CEO that huffs his own farts. He replies with laughing emojis, and shortly after the HR department of Twitter reaches out to tell Halley that he has indeed been fired without notice. Not deterred by things like common sense or empathy, Elon then expresses that the guy is wealthy. I mean, not Blood Emerald wealthy, but still. And that he did no work and made up a disability that prevents him from typing for extended periods of time. In doing so, Elon exposed himself to a colossal ADA lawsuit for no other reason than because he's a repugnant, narcissistic cyst on the asshole of humanity. Halley, not deterred by the spectacle in front of him, decided instead to kill him with kindness. He explained, in a series of tweets, how he suffers from muscular dystrophy. 
He is wheelchair bound and can't use his hands for typing for longer than an hour or so before they begin to seize up. Despite this, he is a wonderfully articulate, accomplished and fulfilled person with a family that loves and supports him, which is just fucking awesome. He is hugely respected in his field and was even voted as Icelandic Businessman of the Year in 2019. He sold his company to Twitter and has worked there ever since. Links to all of Halley's stuff is in the description by the way, I encourage you to check him out, he is really an amazing guy. Truth be told, this isn't the first time Elon has made himself look like a dick on Twitter. Remember that time he called one of the rescue divers in Thailand a pedo just because he was upset that he called Elon's submarine ridiculous? Or how about the time he thought the moon was Mars? In his defence, he did say that he did a quick search on his phone, but didn't scrutinise it too closely. Maybe we should bear that methodology in mind when we take a look at his tweet that says that new Covid cases will be practically zero by the end of April 2020. Elon officially does less research than me. Fucking hell. This Twitter activity is our clearest glimpse into the mind of Elon Musk. He is reactive and callous, with his only redeeming quality being his mortality. He was ousted from PayPal for being an idiot. He bought himself the ability to call himself a co-founder of Tesla, and he shamelessly takes the ideas of the smartest people he can afford to be around just to pass them off as his own. He's what you would call an ideas person. The problem is, anyone can be an ideas person. Everybody in the world has ideas. His superpower isn't that he's super knowledgeable about cars or rocket science or social media. His superpower is that he has a fucking massive amount of money and is willing to risk the lives of his workers to grow his companies. This all reminds me of something that Elon wrote in an email to his Tesla employees. He said, In all fairness, if someone is being a jerk to you but sincerely apologises, it's important to be thick-skinned and accept that apology. At no point has it occurred to this wet fart of a man that maybe, just maybe, he should be encouraging people to be less racist, rather than encouraging victims to be more forgiving. Thank you for watching. I know that there is much more to this man than what I've covered here, but if this video has interested you, I would like to recommend the videos by Some More News, Illuminati, and Thunderfoot. I've also linked a few articles for you to read at your leisure. Love you. Bye bye.